laptop, get your tablet, watch on your TV. Get yourself comfy, this could take a while, make a cup of tea. There'll be songs, there'll be smiles, you might hear a story. Tell your family, get your friends round for a stukely assembly. Good morning everyone and welcome to our Wednesday Reading Assembly. I've got a special treat for you in a moment. We've read our Charles Dickens, we've read Jane Austen, but before I reveal our next book, we've got Cheer, Boo, Song or Silence. Mr Partridge is behind the curtain. He's been wanting to play this for ages and now he's got his moment. What's he going to get? Talk in your classrooms, talk at home. This is his big moment. He's picked a card at random. He knows what to expect, but what's it going to be? Let's find out. Out you come, Mr. Potters! other we every day we to improve we together we will every single stukely day we focus on our stukely motto is our stukely curriculum is memory and four words that make the magic happen Right, what a great start to assembly. Mr. Partridge is gonna be in a great mood all day because of that. Right, reading assembly, back in the zone. We covered quite a lot of Charles Dickens over the first few months of this school year. Uh, and then in the last few weeks, we've read a, a Jane Austen novel, uh, the abridged version of Northanger Abbey. I've been quite honest about that. I've enjoyed learning about Jane Austen and her life and how she became to write books and the sadness that she couldn't admit they were hers while she was alive. Um, didn't really enjoy the story. There wasn't enough going on for me. That's a personal opinion. I know that Mrs. Stevens has read lots of Jane Austen and has enjoyed it. So the great thing about reading and the great thing about literature is you can have an opinion on it. Um, anyway, we've only got a couple of weeks left and I have decided to share with you this book. It's called Short and it is a collection of very short stories. And as it says on the back, the longest of the stories in this book is short. And the shortest story is one sentence long, which means there are lots of stories, a whole book full to make you think, laugh, shiver, and think again. I came across this book about, oh man, about 15 years ago when I was working in London and I was, I was the English leader in the school that I worked in. It was called St. Matthew's. And when I was working as a, a year one teacher there, I went to learn about great books. And this book was recommended and I've loved it ever since. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of stories from this book. Uh, some of them will be a little bit more grown up than others. Um, but I'm hoping that they'll be appropriate for everyone to hear. And the first story that I'm going to hear is called Tit for Tat. Now that is, there we go, look. Tit for Tat. Now that is a phrase which means, well, it's hard to describe really. If something is tit for tat, it means, oh, do you know what? 
I don't know how to describe it. We're going to have to pause while I find out. Okay, I found out. Tit for tat is where you do something to punish somebody for something that they've done for you. And it's usually a very small thing. I'm not going to say too much more because the story will explain. Tit for tat. There's a very good place to eat on the other side of the river. Jackal told camel. Just quickly, here are some pictures of a jackal and a camel, just to get your imagination going. Okay, so a jackal is similar to a, uh, I think it's like a wolf or a dog, or a domestic dog. And then we know what camel is. So we've got jackal and camel. There's a great place to eat on the other side of the river, jackal told camel. The field of sugar cane will suit you. And the crabs and the little bits of fish on the riverbank will suit me. So we'll both be happy. So, Camel swam across the river and Jackal, who did not know how to swim, sat on the camel's back. When they got to the other side, the Jackal ran up and down the riverbank, snapping at all the crab and the little bits of fish. And he ate so fast that he finished before Camel had even chewed a couple of mouthfuls of sugarcane. Then Jackal grew impatient and hurried up and down the sugarcane field, yelping and howling at the top of his voice. The villagers heard Jackal and shouted out in anger. The Jackals are here, scratching away, wrecking the sugarcane. Let's chase those Jackals away. When they reached the field, the villagers did not just see Jackal, but also the hungry camel. They shouted at and beat the camel with sticks and chased the camel all the way back to the riverbank. Time to go home, said Jackal. Jump on my back, said Camel. And the camel waded out across the shallows into the deep water and started to swim back. The camel was not best pleased. What on earth were you doing? Yelping and howling like that, said the camel. I'd barely eaten anything and you'd eaten everything. Everyone in the village heard you and I was the one that got shouted at and beaten with sticks. And I haven't had a decent meal. I can't help it, said Jackal. It's how I am, Camel. When I've eaten that quickly, I need to sing. Ah, I see, said Camel thoughtfully. And he kept on swimming until he got right to the middle of the river where it was its deepest. Jackal, said Camel, I need to roll over. No, said Jackal, why do you need to roll over? It's how I am, Jackal, said Camel. After a good supper, I need to roll over. The Camel rolled over in the water and Jackal came off his back and was swept away down the river. And Camel bared his yellow teeth and swam back home. Okay, this story is called Wrestling. This is a good one. 
There was a prince who decided to ask one wild animal to live with him. But which one? The prince scratched his big ears. That's up to them, he said. The animals must decide for themselves. <gasps> Fast food, yelped Raccoon. Central heating, growled Polar Bear. Air conditioning, roared Tiger. Soft carpets, grunted Tapir. Sweet showers, whinnied Zebra. All the wild animals wanted to live with the prince. But that's impossible, said the lion. Only one of us can go and live with him. We had better settle it by wrestling. First, Elephant wrestled with Grunting Wild Boar and threw him on his back. Then Lion wrestled with Elephant and threw him on his back. And then the Goat wrestled with Lion and threw him on his back. So it went on until only two animals were left, Hyena and Cat. No contest, said Hyena. I'm a hundred times stronger than you. Cat slowly licked her chops. Shall we step outside then, she said. True, Hyena was far stronger than Cat, but each time he tossed her in the air, Cat fell on her feet and sprang at Hyena again. I'm the winner, screamed Hyena. No, you're not, said the other animals. To win, you have to throw your opponent on her back. So Hyena tossed Cat into the air again, and once more Cat landed on her feet. In the end, Hyena was so exhausted that he lay down and fell asleep and rolled over onto his back. Then all the wild animals howled that Cat was the winner. So Cat went to live with the prince. She could wander wherever she wanted and eat whenever she wanted. She could arch her back and rub herself against his shins. In fact, Cat is still there. She still lives with the prince. When he talks to her, she sometimes purrs and sometimes stares at him with frosty blue eyes. Wild, says the prince. Then he strokes Cat's fur the wrong way and it crackles and sparks like metal in a microwave. There's a couple of short stories from Kevin Crossley Holland. We'll have more next week. Uh, this book did used to be for sale in the Oakleaf Bookshop, so keep an eye out if you really enjoyed it. You can probably get it cheap off Amazon or other online providers. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll find it in a bookshop, but I'll try and get some more copies in uh, to the Oakleaf. I'm not sure if it's on AR because there are lots of stories in it, but you can check. Right, thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, year fours this afternoon. Your teachers will be here to celebrate the end of your year and give you your reports. Uh, and then next week, remember we're looking for foundation stage, year one, year six and year five to come in for their class meetings. Please try and come in because you get to see your teachers and all of your friends for the last time this school year. You get to find out who your teachers are next year. Uh, and we can answer other questions and bits and bobs as well. Tomorrow is singing assembly. Friday is tearing assembly. Have a think about that one. Fire up your laptop, get your tablet, watch on your TV. Get yourself comfy, this could take a while, make a cup of tea. There'll be songs, there'll be smiles, you might hear a story. Tell your family, get your friends round for a stupidly assembly.